to read. Then he says, if you write, blessed are those who call are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Guess where you're being called to right now? You're being called to the marriage supper right now. Amen. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Amen. Revelation 19.13. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven are clothed in... Meaning the army that will fight this final battle will be those that understand the mysteries of the scriptures. Amen. White and clean followed him in white robes. Can I get an amen? amen? There's a lot of other scriptures. It would be good for you to go search it out. So clearly, what does righteousness mean? Right understanding. Right understanding. Well, one more step. What's right understanding? Right. Knowing the mysteries of the kingdom. So these Elijah, John the Baptist ministries clearly are coming to bring counsel. What does the Bible say about counsel? Huh? Men of wisdom will increase what? The book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Wise men will get counsel. Guess what that word is? So. Meaning wise people will increase the mysteries of the kingdom that they understand. That was the wisdom Solomon gave us. Because yeah. that was the wisdom that God gave him to rule the people. Do I get an amen? Amen. So, a group of elders in the tribe who sit in council at the foundations of the tribe. So, this word secret also means a level foundation. Yeah. Yeah. What's on a level foundation? The New Jerusalem. In the Bible, we know that the apostles and prophets teach the secrets and mysteries. So what's on the names on the 12 foundations of the New Jerusalem? It's the 12 names of the apostles. Meaning you cannot build the bride of Christ without the secrets and the mysteries. What did Jesus say? He said, he said that he's the, caps, he's the cornerstone and the capstone. Amen. He's the cornerstone and the capstone. But you can't put down the cornerstone or the capstone until you have the right foundation. That's why the church, you were required to learn the secrets before you were even baptized. How could you build Jesus and understand Jesus? Because today we just sprinkle water on babies and say they're baptized. How, how did they learn the secrets? In the, in the womb or what? Amen? So, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Same word of the Mount of Transfiguration. Metamorphose. It's, it's, a, it's from changing from one thing to completely to something else, to a glorified body. Right. By the renewing of your mind, Amen. you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Perfect is for those who learn the secrets, 1 Corinthians 2. So transform has to start in your mind. The metamorphose has to start in your mind. 2 Corinthians 3.14, but their minds were blinded, mm -hmm. for until the same day the veil, there's a veil yeah. unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, right. because the veil is taken away in Christ. Meaning when you're born again, and when Christ is in you, the Holy Spirit, the Old Testament, you don't throw it away, you understand what it means. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't understand, that means you're what? Yeah. Veil. Yeah. The book of Revelation is the word apocalypse. The word apocalypse in the Greek, apo means to open or separate, and kalyptos means the veil. So the apocalypse is not the end of the world. It's the opening of the veils for a people that obviously are veiled in their minds and in their hearts. So that's not the world. The book of Revelations is to the church that has been become a harlot and needs to be pulled back in because the Lord is getting ready to come back. Amen. But even to this day, when Moses is read, Moses in the Old Testament, a veil lies on their hearts. So their minds and their hearts are veiled. Why? God wants to write his word in your heart, your soul, and in your mind. Jesus, when he was teaching in parables, Matthew 13, the disciples said, Jesus, the word disciple means a scholar of the word. I Meaning we're supposed to be scholars of the word. But we've diluted it down to just pray this prayer. You don't have to learn nothing. Just come to church. Make sure you pay your tithe. Amen. 
Commandment number one, pay your tithe. We will preach 45 minutes on the tithe and five minutes about the golf game. And another me give one scripture to prove it. And never interpret what that word really means. And we'll sit there and eat that dung, God calls it, that garbage, that, that feces, and say that that's God. That's, I'm not saying that. That's God saying it in his word. Amen. He literally says you sit there and eat that garbage. Not the paraphrasing what he was really saying. And go look in the Hebrew. You'll just sit there and die. How many of you would sit there and just eat dog crap? But the Lord says that's the way his people are at the end of the age. They're just sitting there eating anything. Matter of fact, he calls us pigs. Jesus said, do not throw your pearl before the swine. What's a swine? It's a pig. A pig will eat anything you give it. Is it hitting home right now? Oh, that sounds good. All the Catholics believe in Jesus, they're saying. All the Baptists believe they use Jesus. All the Methodists, the Pentecostals, we're all saying we all believe in Jesus. That's not what the Bible says. But we make a nice wide way in. We even got a new religion that's coming in to Christianity. Do you know that? We're gonna we're gonna win a billion Muslims. We have a new religion. Does anybody know what it's called? Chrislam. Christianity and Islamic people coming together to worship Jesus and Muhammad. That's how we're done. Oh, Lord, no Catholic Huh. And it's crazy that we sit there. And somebody will bring us truth. And we don't, and we'll, we'll you know, we learn some garbage out of the past. We'll try to contradict it by what we learned out of the past without checking up on the man of God to see if he's really teaching us truth. Don't, don't go by what your past was. Right. Study to show yourself approved. Right. Nevertheless, in one terms of the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Spirit, now the Lord is the Spirit. Notice, when you turn to the Lord, the veils are removed. You get an apocalypse. You get a removal of the veil. You get a revelation or an opening of the veil or the opening of the secrets. That's exactly what the word apocalypse means, to open the secrets. Amen. So the whole book of Revelations is about secrets that are being opened to us. Amen. I got a bunch of secrets. Can anybody tell me my secrets? You can't tell me my secret until I tell you what it is. That means I'm telling you something you never heard before. So the whole book of Revelations is about stuff we have never heard before. Amen. So what's, what's that going to mean? I'm going to get my mind renewed. Yeah. My mind's got to be transformed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Nevertheless, when, the, the, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Um, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, now what's this liberty? When we get the veil is taken off, Amen. But we all with unveiled faces, behold us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed. There it is again. Transformed, metamorphosed into the same, same, same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Meaning, what's those trumpets that we're supposed to hear to fly away with? The trumpets of the prophets speaking to the church in the book of Revelation that are transforming our mind so we can be changed into the same image that Jesus is, the same image of the Father is.
But this transformation is coming by our mind being renewed first by the prophets. So here we got one scripture, Paul saying, go be speak in peace and safety. I've been to those prophetic movie, I mean, uh, movies, meetings, entertainment, episodes. Where everything's right, everything's okay, you're going to be all right. God loves you, well, just the way you are. No, he doesn't, he wants you dead. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if he loves you the way you are, why would he want to keep, why would, would the scripture say he wants us dead? Amen? Have you been changing in your life with the Lord? Are you still the same Christian you were 40 years ago? 20 years? 30 years ago? When was the last time you led somebody to Jesus? When was the last time you talked to somebody even about the Lord? That should tell you something. Amen? If, if you're not talking, I'm not talking about your, to your Christian friends. I'm talking, when was the last time you just walked up to a person you don't know? The Spirit of the Lord said, go witness to that person. You just walked up from Starbucks, Walmart, and just dropped the bomb on them. Because we must not be doing it because the whole world's getting worse. We need another Salvation Army. Amen. Now, not the Salvation Army that sells clothes. We need the real Salvation Army. Amen. So, the, our, the veils are coming off our face. Now, that's another term in Hebrew. For a bride that's taking the veil off. Amen? Amen. And, and, and I said this last time I was here when I was teaching on the Ketubah, the marriage contract. We are See, the thing is, the marriage is happening at Yom Kippur. Yes. Amen? So, and here's these, the, these everything that Daniel's prophecy, the, the, the Jubilee is all falling on that day. Amen. Next year. Yeah. It's, it's here. It's coming. Is Jesus going to come back or is he going to come back in you? Are you ready for what's really coming? Hallelujah. And I'm not saying I'm even ready. I'm pressing now. Amen. It's a race, Paul says. We're running a race. If you're running a race, if you're sprinting against a bunch of other guys on the track, right, and you're running crooked, who do you think is going to win? It's the one who runs straight. <laughs> Fastest. Amen. If I'm running like this down that track, hey, look at me. <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. So we got to get these straight. Elijah ministry has got to get it right. Amen. God's bringing us. Isaiah 40, 40, verse 1. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended and her iniquity is pardoned. And she has received from the Lord and a double portion for her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. We know Jesus is quoting that scripture, amen? But why is he quoting it? Because the Elijah ministries have come. They're removing the iniquity, the twisted teaching, and the warfare is ended. Some of you are waiting for the battle of Armageddon. You already got a battle of Armageddon. It's going on right between your ears. Because the scripture says that God is an enmity, war with the carnal mind. Every, every word in Hebrew speaks of terror, third function. What's the mountain? I just said it earlier. It's what? Your mind. So what's the battle of Armageddon? Arma means mountain of Megiddo. So in Greek, what's the Greek word Megiddo? Or in Hebrew? Well, you should. You don't even study this. <laughs> Amen. The word Megiddo means to overcome, to be an overcomer. So the battle is for the mind of the overcomer. Where's the battle fought? In the valley of Jezreel. Isn't it interesting? The battle of Armageddon, the battle up in the mountains, really fought in the valley. Amen. Does anybody know what Jezreel means? That means to sow the seed. So the battle of, of Armageddon, in the spiritual sense, is to sow the seed of the <laughs> and the mind of the overcomer. That's the battle. And I can see right now it's a battle for some of you. I got my sword out and I'm wielding it and you're sitting there going... You ain't still in my antichrist mindsets. I love my devils. I don't want to change. What do you think?
think Jesus called Peter Satan for? Because Peter did not understand what was going to happen. Jesus just gets done telling his disciples this was what's going to happen. This is the way it's going to go down, fellas. So I don't want you to be surprised by what's getting ready to happen. Peter says, this ain't happening. We will fight for you. We'll, 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 we'll kill for you. We look, and he didn't say that anger. He said that a lot. We love you, Lord, and we're not going to let this happen. Right? So out of a heart of love, Jesus tells Peter, that he's not going to let him go through this, through the crucifixion. Can you imagine if Jesus would have listened to Peter? None of us would be here because Jesus would have got crucified. He would have stopped the eternal plan of God. Peter in love would have stopped the eternal plan of God. Jesus turns to him. He says, get behind me, Satan. Why did he call him Satan? Because Satan in Hebrew speaks of a confused mindset. He said, you don't understand what's getting ready to happen. Amen. And then after that, Peter thought he was going to be the betrayer. Because when Jesus said, somebody's going to betray me, who's the best candidate? Satan. <laughs> Peter. What do you think in the Last Supper? Peter's going, who's going to betray you? Who's going to betray you? They're walking down the road, who's going to betray you, Lord? The guy got a serious issue because he thinks he's the betrayer. He wasn't sure, but if he would have learned the scripture, he would have knew who the betrayer was going to be. Amen? Amen. 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 So the battle has ended. Look at your neighbor say, the battle's coming to an end. The battle's coming to an end. Amen? That word ended is the parent root to the word, how that even mem, mem, uh, mem It means to speak the word. So the, the very root to this word for ending the battle means the word where we're done fighting with the word. Amen? Amen? A word, a chain of words blended together to form a sentence. So when the words come together or when letter Hebrew letters come together, they make a chain. Amen. Amen? Amen? So now when you look at the book of Revelations, and the book of Revelation says that an angel is going to come from the east with a great chain and bind Satan for a thousand years. All right. What's he going to bind Satan with? Word. word of Yahweh. Do you have the, enough word in you to bind the enemy? Amen. Amen. Brother, you ever, Daniel, you ever fight in the courtroom? Did you ever go to a war with anybody? What do you fight with? What do you fight with? Words. You're fighting with words. The whole legal battle is about what they say what you say, and what the truth is. Yes. That's scripture. That's the scripture. Satan is the accuser. He said, this word they got is wrong. Jesus is the one that's trying to teach us the word. And he's trying to get us out of our harlotry. And it's a battle of words. That's why the mind, the battle is up here, in the mind. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. A word, a chain of words from a sentence as a sickness, as a break in the chain of the body. Sickness comes because of our lack of understanding of God's word. Amen. Back at the We're getting ready to see the greatest healing revivals that have ever been seen. We're going to see things you, I grew up in a miserable school and she used to say it all the time, Catherine Pullman. They said, there's coming a day where everybody's going to need it ain't going to be about being healed if you walk away from the truth like the lepers did. Ten lepers came in for, to get healed. Only how many came back? Wow. One. One out of ten. It's bad numbers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You give him one praise. When you start looking at praise and worship, it speaks of people that are really learning the ways of, of, the, Lord, of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It speaks of fruit. There's a lot of things you can go take a look at in your ancient Bible blog. Hebrew Bible likes to talk. The past, now this you'll like, and then this, and here, this is another Hebrew concept. If I'm, say I'm walking towards that door over there in front of me, and I would say, what, it, where am I walking? Am I walking into my future, or am I walking into my past? Your Greek mindset will tell you, well, he's walking to his future, because that's the direction he's heading. And he's leaving his past because it's behind him. Amen? But that's exactly opposite in Hebrew thought. What's in front of me, right, is 
It's my past because I see it. It's all based on my ability to see. Not the, not the Greek word, hallelujah, but the Hebrew word speaks of I can see where I'm going. That means I'm in my past. That means my future is behind me because I can't see it. So what does the word repent mean? To turn around. To turn around. What am I turning to? See, when God's asking us to repent, he's saying, go back to things you have not seen yet. Go back to the mysteries of the kingdom. Go back to revelation you don't understand yet about me. So I'm going to put a whole book in there for you called the book of Revelations. Amen? And that's actually where we get the word circumcision from. Amen? So, the warfare is ended because now the word, hallelujah, has been released. God just didn't say, well, I ended her warfare because... You know, she prayed the sinner's prayer. Because that doesn't work in the early church. They didn't do that. This word is accept, approved, accepted, reckon, look at this, reconcile self. Pardon, approve, accept, look at this, to satisfy a debt. Meaning the debt has been paid. And then we've got to go from that word to the word uh, uh, restitution or uh, uh uh, restore, those two words literally means a debt that's being paid off. A lot of Christians say, my debt's already paid. Jesus went to the cross for me. Jesus just put a down payment on you. There's two parts to the marriage contract. There is the ketubah, which is the first part where the contract is made. The bride is considered married to the bridegroom. You can do that. They can do that when they're first born. Right. But at the end, when they physically get together and they consummate the marriage, that's the physical marriage that's taking place. Yeah. Up to that point, she wears a veil. So the veil has to come off. Amen? So that whole process takes time. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And again, it speaks of a pot shirt, a desire broken piece of pottery. Pottery were commonly used to replace writing tablets. So we're all pottery. God's writing messages on us. Amen. That's just a quick definition. Amen? So... Here we, we see that God is removing our, our what? Iniquity, our twisted teaching, because what? We're grabbing hold of the word, and we're becoming messages, tablets of clay. Amen? Now, for she had, has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. And, and this double, this is Elijah giving Elijah a double portion. This, what you, the way you walk now in your Christian life is nothing <laughs> compared to when he puts the glory on you. Yeah. It, you, you will, when you go into the glory, you're going, you're a devil. He said, was I even saved before? Yeah. Amen. Because even the word salvation, when you look at it in Greek and Hebrew, we have two, three tenses in English, past, present, and future tense. I did it. I'm doing it. I will do it. But in Greek and Hebrew, you have a fourth tense. It's called an ongoing tense. It's all three of those together. It means I was saved, I am being saved, and I will be saved. So you're going through a process in Hebrew thought. Amen? Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert, hallelujah, a highway for our God. So here's this Elijah ministry that Jesus quotes, talks about John the Baptist. And literally, he's talking about a people that are making a way straight. The apparent root of that is to press from the beginning, right? This word, the word shin means pressure. It's teeth that are pressing. And what's the resh? The resh is the mind, the head, amen? So it's pressure on the mind in Hebrew thought. Can I get an amen? amen? So if it's pressure on the mind, the Lord is pressing on your mind. The word anointing actually means to squeeze or to press in the oil. I get an amen. amen. What is the oil? The it's the Holy Spirit. It's the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Meaning God is trying to see people think, oh, give me the anointing, brother. Yeah. Sit there and listen. Get your notebooks. Get your computers. Start pressing the oil in. Right. Yeah. Amen. So there's a pressure. Why, do, why is pre house pressure created? By resistance. If if there's no resistance, there's no pressure. Amen? So, if there's pressure on me, that means I'm resisting 
the teaching. So now what are you going to do with the great tribulation? The great pressure. See, you're all thinking, oh, it's going to be, this is going to happen out in the world and that and this. The pressure is in here. The pressure is to get people to let the anointing in instead of resisting the anointing. Amen. I mean, because if the Holy Spirit is the teacher and the counselor, he's the anointed one. Amen. We go to the parable of the virgins. They didn't have any oil in their lamps. What does that mean? They had no teaching. Their lamps were empty. And they didn't have enough to get across. They had no revelation of what was coming. Amen. So, if we're resisting the anointing, what's that? Spirit of Antichrist. Against the anointing. That's why John, in the, in the book of John, he says, he says it this way. He said, the spirit of Antichrist has come out from amongst us. He said, because they were once with us, and now that they left us, that is the witness, that is the sign that they are the Antichrist. Amen. Meaning it was those people that were in the church learning the secrets and mysteries, they didn't want to learn them no more, and left. They became the Antichrists. But... You know, we want the Pope to be the Antichrist. We want Obama to be the Antichrist. Everybody wants somebody else to be the Antichrist instead of looking in the mirror. And say, you know what, I'm resisting the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. When the, Holy Spirit, when the Lord tells you to quit smoking or quit doing this or quit fornicating or quit doing whatever, and you keep going, what do you think that is? Antichrist. So the Lord said, be conformed to my hand. Don't resist my image. And the way that's going to happen is the renewing of the mind. Right. So all these things, hallelujah, the Lord is dealing with. And notice this word. Hallelujah. It also speaks of your thoughts. Hallelujah. Notice this word is also used for the remnant. That is left. Look, it isn't it interesting. You want to get a great revelation? Yes. Look at this word. This, this is from the word straight righteous. It means also the word remnant comes from it. And the word remnant means what is left behind. <laughs> but Tim Hayes books say you don't want to be left behind. But I want to be left behind because I want to be the righteous of God. I want to be the remnant. Those that understand the mystery of the kingdom. I want to have the revelation of the kingdom.
get an amen? Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Every valley shall be ex and every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall become straight, and the rough places smooth. G uh, Isaiah says. So, what's the mountain? Well, let's just go and look at it. Amen. This is the Hebrew word for mountain. Hallelujah. A mountain, a hill, the picture of the resh represents the head. In Hebrew thought, all things are in motion. Inanimate, but the head of the landscape rising up out of the ground. So your head is your mountain coming up from your ground. How was Adam created? Dust of the earth. And dust of the earth. So your earth has a mountain. Hallelujah. Just ask your wife. The mountain of mine. See, we, <laughs> the disciples are talking Hebrew, we're talking something in left field. If you have the faith of a, what's the seed? The word. If you have the faith of the littlest word at all, you'll say to this, be ye. So when the word comes in, it removes all the clutter out of your mind. It removes the mountain. Just if you get the littlest revelation. Lord. Just a little revelation. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the littlest revelation. The thought as a look at this thought as a mental pregnancy. <laughs> Are you getting pregnant? Is your brain getting pregnant? Yes. Or are you aborting the seed? Full term. Amen? And obviously when you get pregnant, it takes nine months. Hallelujah to deliver what the, what the Lord gave you nine months before. Amen? So it takes time. You've got to press. Amen? So every mindset, every mental brick, those high exalted things are going to be brought in love. Meaning everything that we're going to walk is straight and narrow. So I'm going to be up and down. How many of you, you feel like your Christian walk is up and down and up and down and up and down? You know, what am I doing? Where am I going? What does God want me to do? Those are all crooked thoughts. Amen. God's going to take you to a place that's going to be straight and narrow. Boom. Amen. Remember when the Hebrews came out of Egypt? Remember when they came to Egypt? How long should it took them to go into the promised land? That should have been like five to seven days. Boom. They should have been right in. If they would have walked from, straight from Egypt right to, right to, uh, uh, what was that city they first conquered? Uh, Jericho. Boom. Seven, three, seven days. How many days did they end up staying out there? Forty years. Forty years. Why? Murmuring disbelief. They kept walking crooked in the wilderness. What does that mean? If all the feasts tell us the Feast of Passover, Jesus is crucified. Three days later, Feast of First Fruits, Jesus is resurrected. Fifty days later, Feast of Pentecost, the church is birthed at Mount Sinai. Amen? That's the early reign. That's all about the first coming. So the latter reign has to be about the second coming, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. John heard a voice as a trumpet speaking, the beginning of the book of Revelation, chapter 4. In the middle is the Feast of Atonement, the marriage ceremony. Amen. At the end, it says, now the tabernacle of God is with men. These are the tabernacles. Early rain, latter rain. First coming, second coming. Glory. So if I go back and look at the pattern, the Bible's filled with the pattern. Yeah. So when the Hebrews came out of Egypt, you know what another name for Hebrew is? In the Greek, overcomer. Right. Hebrew means to cross over or pass over. Hallelujah. The word overcomer means one who goes across. Amen. So you're going to be an overcomer? Are you going to leave the are you going to leave the wilderness or are you going to go to the promised land? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So the church is birthed at Passover, or I mean, the Jesus is crucified at Passover. Hebrews come out of Egypt at Passover. Three days later, Jesus is crucified. The Hebrews go through the Red Sea on the Feast of First Fruits. Here's a pattern coming. Yeah. Amen. Here's the pattern coming. Fifty days later, the church is birthed at Pentecost. Moses goes up against the Ten Commandments at Pentecost. Yeah. Amen. So there's the pattern of the church. There's the first coming. So after that, they wander around the wilderness crookedly for 40 years. A day that only should have, the journey should have, only should have took a few days, took them 40 years. Why? So the church has been out in the wilderness for 40 jubilees. God counts everything in jubilees. We're coming to the 
40th Jubilee, or the 40th Jubilee from the time of Jesus. Amen. Jubilee happens once every 50 years. 40 times 50 is? 2,000 years! It's time to come out of the wilderness! The word wilderness means a place where there's no rain. We're coming into the promised land. We're crossing over the Jordan. What day do they cross over the Jordan? It's the third day. What day is it right now? We're coming to the third day. It's been two thousand days equal to a thousand years. It's been two thousand years from Jesus till now. We're stepping into the third day. Who took them across the Jordan? Joshua. What's another? What's his Greek name? Jesus. Jesus took them into the promised land on the third day. When they went into the promised land, what did they go to do? Relax. They went to fight the fallen angels. The Antites, Persianites, Mesuzites, they are all descendants of the fallen angels. Our job is to fight the fallen angels, Troy. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. There's a battle coming, and we got to get ready for that battle. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know where the fallen angels came down? Mount Hermon. 33.33 degrees north longitude of the equator, 33.33 degrees east of the Paris Meridian. 33.33 degrees is 2,012.9 nautical miles, or translates into a date, December 21st, 2012. What happened? What was supposed to happen December 21st, 2012? That was the end of the Mayan calendar. Who, now we realize we're being trained by the fallen, by the Samaritans and Phoenicians, which is fallen cultures, Egyptians. Right here in Phoenix, you can go to the museum and say, I want to see that, that jawbone you found out of one of these caves. Your jawbone's like that. That jawbone was like that. They said it had to be a man between 18 to 21 foot tall. Right here. Where did these giants come from? How's that, why is it that written in our history books? Yeah. Why aren't we hearing this stuff? Why is it all being hidden? Right. Why are flying saucers flying over Phoenix? Uh, yeah. All the time. They're on the way to Tucson. Do you know the word Phoenix comes from the word Phoenician? It has to do with the resurrection of the Phoenix bird. Which it, it, that was that was the fallen angels had copied that the or brought that theology forward. Yeah. But as the Phoenix was a resurrection of wisdom. Amen. That, that when you look at the Phine uh, Phoenicians, the Samaritans, and the Egyptians, all part of the same coming out of that area. Matter of fact, when Cain, uh -huh. Amen. When 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 Ham sinned against Noah, you know where he went. 33.33 degrees north of one to two. He went to Mount Hermon. He went right to the place the fallen angels came down. That's where he was trained up. Cain was the first Phoenician. He was the first to be trained up by the Anunnaki. Before that, nobody knew anything. All of a sudden, here comes advanced mathematics, all this stuff. They move stones that are as big as this building. Find me, a, find me any machine that can move this building if it was a solid stone. You can't find it. How are they moving it? Hello? We're, we're coming into a battle, saints. We're coming into a massive battle. And we're going to be proven. We're going to be proven. Hallelujah. Because... You can't find a victory with you can't have a victory without a battle. Then we want a free gospel. When even the fool, the wise told the they said, "Give us your oil." The foolish said to the wise, "Give us your oil." The wise said, "You have to buy it." There's a price to pay. It's time to pay the price. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Notice the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Revealed. Notice, look at this scripture. Meaning when these Elijah ministries come, obviously Jesus knew that they come to reveal the glory of the Lord. How we would come back into the glory. That goes right back to the Mount of
Mount of Transfiguration. Amen? Reveal. Galah. Amen? To reveal, to open something, to uncover something. To uncover, to reveal something, to be revealed. Amen? To uncover nakedness. So there's a revelation there too. If you're naked, you're not ready. Jesus said to the church, he said, you see that you're rich. See, he's telling us something when he's talking to the church. He said, you say you're rich and increase with much good. But don't you know you're poor, naked, blind, and wretched? Yeah. <laughs> you think you're blessed because you have things. He says, but spiritually, you're naked. If you're naked, that means you don't have the garment of fine linen, right. which is great understanding. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Notice this word, I am, which is an I, and lamed is a yoke. The word lamed, that word spelled out literally means teaching. So the lament is a yoke, the yoke is the teaching. So when Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, he's talking about Hebrew understanding. Amen. So we're being yoked to Jesus through wisdom, through revelation, through the anointing, spirit and truth, amen. The picture of the I am is a picture of the I representing knowledge and experience. The lament is a picture of the shepherd's staff or yoke. You can bind these meaning, the staff <coughs> or the yoke. A staff is lifted over the shoulders is attached to the oxen for performing work. Amen? So, when Jesus is talking about the yoke coming upon us, or the staff, amen, or the rod, those are teachings. The Lord says, he said to them that overcome, I'm going to give them a rod to rule the nations. So how are you going to rule the nations? Through teaching, through the word of God. Amen? Man, hallelujah. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. The Nephilim are created beings. They're fallen angels. Right, right. They are governed. Yes. They're just not rogue. Mm -hmm. Satan himself, the head of the whole clan, yeah. has to come and answer to God every day. Yeah, right. The book of Job tells us that. Mm -hmm. And so Satan, did, Satan didn't come in and tell God, tell Yahweh, hey, I'm here, I'm here to do whatever I want. I don't have to come to this meeting. <laughs> I can dress up any way I want. It says that he came the angels came, and they were inspected. Meaning, Satan had to come to be inspected himself. I mean, he didn't come in there all rebellious, given an attitude. He answered to Yahweh. Yahweh said, if you consider my servant, Joe, he said, I, I haven't even thought about the guy. you got a hedge around him. You can't touch him. So, what did God say? How about if I lift the hedge? Then all of a sudden, Satan got all kind of ideas. I, I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do this. I'll do that. I can do this. Um, and, and all of a sudden, he said, I can make him deny you. I can bring so much pressure on him that he will deny you. God said, you can do all that, but you have to spare his life. You can touch his family. You can touch his kids. You can touch everything. But him, he's mine. What is the moral behind that story? Is God letting Job be pressured and, and tormented because he just wants to see if he won't deny the name of God? Uh-uh. Job is being tried in his faith if he believes the word of God, if he knows the word of God, and he will stand on that word, even if it costs him his family. He said, I won't know of your word. Amen. So when the Lord says, you'll deny all to follow me, your mother, brother, sister, husband, wife, he meant everything. Nothing is between us and him. Amen. Right. Amen.
That's literally what it means. They can, Jesus, why are you teaching the people in parables? Because seeing they do not see. That you have eyes to see the secrets and the mysteries of the scripture. You're all called to be prophets. All called. Not this stuff. Oh, this is the Lord. You're going to get a new house. Uh, that's not prophecy. That is not prophecy. If that's prophecy, the best prophet I know is that New Jersey medium lady. She comes out, tells them about their family, their kids, and everything else. So is she a prophet just because she can tell them their business? No. She's operating under a spirit of divination. And there's people in the body of Christ that are operating under the spirit of divination. They're doing it for money. Paul tries to tell us the example with Balaam and, and Balaam. Right, right. Said he prophesied for money. Anybody, brother, gets up here and tries to appease everybody so that they don't get a bigger offering is not a prophet of God. He's come in a spirit of deception. He's come in a spirit of sorcery. He's come to twist your mind so that Satan can manipulate you. Amen. Come on, preach. The seed, the seed is not money. The seed is the word of God. The seed is not money. The seed is the word of God. The seed is not money. The seed is the word of God. The word of God. Connected to another. 
Amen? If Jesus is the vine and we're the branches, that means we're united to him through the teaching. Do we understand what he's doing? See, the real unity of the body is those that have revelation.
and things that you've been working in and seeing, hallelujah, just sussing things out, sussing people out, hallelujah, that's only one part of the prophetic gifting that you have, and the Lord's calling you to be a teacher in this next season, a prophetic teacher, hallelujah, moving in the miraculous signs and wonders, that it's been in your heart to see God move in the miraculous, you've asked God why, hallelujah, but the Lord says literally molded you. And he, he's made you a praiser and a worshiper. And he says, hallelujah, you'll, you, you have no problem setting people straight. And that's why he's going to use that, hallelujah, in this next season. Hallelujah, that mantle, that prophetic anointing, the Lord says, I put it upon you. I put it upon you for this next season. Father, I release the mantles for this next season. I release the spirit of Elijah. God is raising people quick. Moses went up on the mountain in 40 days. God set Moses on fire with the whole Torah and the revelation. In 40 days, he came back with all the prophetic understanding. If you will just put your heart to the plow and let the Holy Spirit take hold of you fully, he's going to prepare you for this next season. And hallelujah, when these principalities come, everybody will be going, oh no, here comes principalities. Oh no, we're afraid, we're scared, what are they going to do? But when those principalities see you, they're going to go, oh no, oh I'm afraid to
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.